Fight and Talk back again. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Harry Hardwick ahead of his bout against Steve Amiable on Cage Warriors 145. Harry, a fight I think a lot of fans are very excited for now it's been announced. How did it come about? Uh, I was just like, basically I just asked for it. I was like, it's the fight that will get me a title fight. Um, I want it to fight like as soon as possible, really. Um, obviously, I haven't taken like a bit of time off after the last fight because it was a war and that. So like, if I could get a fight on November 4th against someone who put me in the line for the title, I could hypothetically be ready to fight for the belt on the December 31st show. So like, that's that's sort of like an ideal world situation. Obviously, fucking... It's MMA, shit's just weird all the time and like you can't really plan for things, but that's what I want. I mean, if we go back to Belfast and before folks on this card, that last time out, like you say, what a war it was. I know you did your interview with Katie Hunter after for MMA UK. A little bit concussed. I mean, when you look back on that fight, what a night. Uh, honestly, that was like one of the best MMA shows I've ever been to. Um, like literally, there was, there was one bad fight on the card, really, and that was the one just before mine, so I didn't see it. Um... Yeah, it was it was like honestly, the crowd, just the the fights, the like obviously my fight would have been fight of the night had the main event not been a banger and that'd been the one everyone was paying attention to. Um but no, it was min midnight, just fucking loved the whole experience, me. Other than the brain damage. If we look forward then it's another massive card in London. Top of the bill, of course, Jordan Vichenich, Paul Hughes rematch. A fight I'm sure you're gonna have a very, very keen eye on. How do you see that one playing out? Uh, probably Vichenik, probably. Paul Hughes might pull out. He, he seems to train too much. Like, like, yeah, you know, like I, I keep an eye on what other other fighters and stuff are doing, and I'm like, he's, he's saying like, oh, he needs to do his recovery thing, which is he runs 20 million minutes on a on a treadmill and then he does his stretching and all this and I'm like stretching can make you more injury prone and running barely helps your recovery. Just have a nap. <laughs> If we look forward, then the opponent, of course, Steve Amiable. After a bit of a scare now, he's on a four-fight winning streak. What have you made of his past performances? I know we're very, very early into this camp, if you like. So have you had much time to study him yet? Uh, I'm leaving Josh to do that. He needs to do a better job. He's barely set out. Um, but, no, he's just very plain. Like, he has zany shots and, like, a pube haircut. But other than that, he's just really, really plain. Like, his fighting style is just, like, literally meat and potatoes, but, like, a boring kind of potatoes and, and, and bland meat. But yourself, then, Harry, if you look, I mean, your last four outings, if you like, on k have all been cracking, cracking fights. How much have you felt that fighting these higher-level guys on a show like k has helped in your personal progression? That's so good they've been. Three fights has felt like four fights. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's good. Um, obviously... Damage ain't great. Um, I'm trying to avoid some of that. But yeah, just it, it's good. Um, I'd probably be like, this is, it sounds daft. Had I chose lesser competition, I would probably be like further further on in my career, but I would 100% be a worse fighter. It's just, it's a strange one. I feel like I've sort of had a baptism of fire early on. And then I feel like when I when I eventually do move on to the big leagues, I think it'll, it'll be a big step back in competition for the first however many fights. You mentioned, of course, George, your brother there before. What a night in London, getting that belt. What was that like to be in that corner and just that night in general? Uh, I mean, that wasn't what we planned. <laughs> it was very just like, we had a lot of other shit planned and then he just did the same shit he did in his other fights, but it worked. So, fuck it. Uh, it was a great night. Like, it, it was it was good fun. Like, even just like, like it was really funny backstage. Just, just the days leading up to it in the hotel were funny as. Um, like, even... The fight was like there was a point where Kyle's back was to the the fence and George was pressuring in and I kind of sensed Kyle Kyle was going to shoot so I was like jab him in the chest George you know like the it's like jab his level like so well I'd, so I just said jab him in his chest and then Kyle throws one I'm like not you Kyle and then you see him giggle and then George drops him with the body shot a couple of seconds later so I'm like I'm gonna take more responsibility for that than I otherwise would because <laughs> Kyle clearly couldn't brace for it because he was laughing at my amazing sense of humor. <laughs> What's it like then for you, Stu, to look? When you, if you went right back to the first day you just walked into this gym and to say, right, in X amount of years, when he's going to be a cage warrior's title at once, probably one fight away. I mean, what would the younger self say to that? You fucking took ages, haven't you? <laughs> Young me was a proper moron. He thought it would all just come straight away. I thought I'd be in the UFC by the time I'm like fucking 22, 23. I thought all this bullshit because I was arrogant and probably very deluded.
<laughs> I've for, had that beaten out of me. And, well, probably not. Finally then, Harry, can we get a prediction for you for fight night and what can fans expect when you meet Steve Amiable? I'll say all this stuff and then I'll probably take some weird injury in the first round. George, George wants a split decision. I mean, I could, that's the thing. I could beat him handily and then still look like... Get a split decision. Judges hate me. I don't know why. Like, what? Like, but um, no, I don't know. I'm just, just going to punch his head in. Um, try to be the first guy to finish him in Cage Warriors. Obviously, he saved himself from already being finished in Cage Warriors in the Mads Bunnell fight by missing weight. Because, like, let's face it, if that fight had gone another 40 seconds, he'd have been out of there. But he managed to, like, get it cut down to three rounds. So, my boy Mads Bunnell follows both of us on Insta because... As you can see why. <laughs> Perfect, Larry. Thank you very much right. for your time, mate. Thank Do you. Bit.